by dividing this by m or m and minus one. It depends on if you want to get one or not. Okay? Any question about this? So the m always be less than x n plus one? Because you are calculating a module, modulus, is mod m. Anything mod m will not be bigger than m. This part. This mod, this operator calculates the uh, modulus. Of so when the three mod five for example. Yes. It will be three. Three mod five is equal to three. So anything mod m will not be greater than m. It's the remainder of the right here. Okay. So anything mod m would not be greater than m. Correct. Right. The maximum value is yes, m minus one. Otherwise, it will not be modulus. So let's look at this simple uh, formulation. The period of this LCG is at most m. We can easily define. Uh, uh, we can easily see that and uh, prove that. Do you see the reason why this period will never exceed m? Because in a sequence of m that is, has a size of m minus 1, there should be one number repeated, right? Because these numbers will only range from 0 to m minus 1. It has m distinct values. So if you have m minus 1 values in a sequence, there should be at least one number repeated. And for the same re same number, same input, the same input will generate the same output. So that's why the period of it is at most m. But this only happens when a and c are good enough. We typically select m to be equal to 2 to the power of 32 or 2 to the power of 64 to provide a very long period. And the LCG will only have a full period if it satisfies those three conditions. The first thing is C and N should be relatively prime, prime, which means their greatest common divisor is equal to 1. So if M is equal to 2 to the power of 32, then if A is equal to, if C is equal to 3, it satisfies this condition. But if C is equal to 2, this will be violated because C has a divisor 2 and M has a divisor 2 also. So their greatest common divisor is not 1. And A minus 1 should be divisible by all prime factors of M, which is 2. And A minus 1 is a multiple of 4 if M is a multiple of 4. So if you satisfy this, three conditions, you get a full period. But there are some problems of LCGs. The first problem is called the hyperplane problem. I think you still remember the one, uh, the, pro uh, the process we used to generate points when we talk about Monte Carlo. So we want to create a point x, y. What do we do? We said x is equal to red which is another generator, and then we say y is equal to red. That's how we generate the points, right? But we can mathematically, mathematically prove that if you use LCG to, cons to create these points, all these points will lie on some hyperplane. And the number of hyperplane is limited. What does hyperplane mean? So when you talk about three dimension, three dimensional space, the hyperplane is a plane that you will see. Let me show you, just show you the example. So you understand that. So this is linear congruential method. When, you, when we use that to create points, these are three demonstration of these points. You'll find that 
they are falling in some hands, they are flying on type of planes or planes. See that? So no matter how you choose them, choose the modulus, for example, this one doesn't look at hyperplane, and if I rotate it, you will see the hyperplane problem still exists at the angle. Let's get more numbers. Actually, this selection only has a little limit of output, so we can easily see that we can cover this using a limit, limited number of planes. But there should be an angle that we see. It must exist somewhere, but just takes time to go there. I think the number, the total numbers is too small, so we cannot clearly see it. Let me change to another one. In this case, it has a lot of numbers, so it will be easier for us to see that. In some planes, see, you see the pattern? Okay. You can see that. Mathema mathematically, they already approve that approve. the upper bound of these hyperplanes is determined by n, and the number uh, and the dimensions of points you are going to generate. So for example, if you have if you want to generate points in 3D space and m is equal to this number, then there will be at most 73 hyperplanes. And with the number with the points have uh, with the dimension of the points growing, we have less and less planes that these points will, will um, lie on. So you want to generate a 10-dimensional vector. All of them will lie on 13 hyperplanes. Any question about this? Does this mean the quality will be worse and worse? Yes. Yes, that's true. That's true. So after they found the problem, there has been a lot of research that was based on this linear conventional generator published. So they were very suspicious about those, about those results. Another big problem, of, although this period of LCG is very long, can be very long, the lower bits, lower order bits have much shorter period. What's the lower order bits? So we have one zero one zero. This is a high order bit. This is low order bit. So this one has the lowest order, okay? So digits to the right are repeating themselves very quickly. So these are two problems of LCG. Now, the second one I'm going to introduce is called Mersenne Twister. I want to emphasize that this Mersenne Twister is not developed by someone called Mersenne but by two Japanese scientists in 1998. The reason that they call it a Mersenne Twister is because they use a number called a Mersenne Prime. A Mersenne Prime is a prime that is equal to 2 to the power of something minus 1. This Mersenne Twister has very huge period, which is equal to 2 to the power of 19937 minus 1. This is a very big number. So, the popular Mersenne Twister generator is sometimes called MT199337. It has been widely used in R, Maple, MATLAB, Python, and Ruby as the default random number generators. So, the hyperplane problem, you will not see it, see it existing in MATLAB. Okay. 
okay? And I want to show you the algorithm. I really want you to understand the algorithm. But it's impossible in the class because Mason Twister is very complex. It involves a lot of bit or bit n and sh bit shift. And it doesn't have a lot of meaning in it. It's very complex algorithm. So if you want, you can read it after class. But I don't think we can explain that. But it has already overcome some shortcomings of previous generators. But let me give you some examples first. First, let's see how it performs in 2D. Let me give you this generator. This is not, this sobo is not a random number. It's low discrepancy number. Uh, it's low discrepancy sequence, as I uh, mentioned in the last class, using quasi Monte Carlo. So with the number, with the C changing, or with the number of points changing, this looks very beautiful, but it's not a random number generator. But uh, when we talk about Mosin Twister, you will see that the number of points, when you see this moving, it looks very random. Right? It looks very random. But it's only in 2D. If you use like LCG, you can also always see that in 2D. So what about in 3D case? So these are numbers generated by Mr. Twister in 3D space. You will see that no matter which angle you are watching it, we are watching from, the points are always following a very good distribution. Visually, they look very good. So that's why most software today is using Mosin Twister. Okay. Now, let's go on to a quiz. Before we do the quiz, I want to have a review of two important concepts, PDF and CDF. PDF means probability density function. And the definition is P of x lies between A and B is equal to the integral of fx between A and B. PDF. I think you have learned it from the statistics. And CDF is the integral of f of PDF from infinity, uh, negative infinity to x. Let me just make you remember that, remind you of that. So here is a PDF. This is normal distribution. And this is the corresponding CDF of it. If we change the mean, you will see this part is also moving. So PDF and CDF. Okay, all understand? Now, 